With the two main characters cast, the pilot was rushed into production. It was the first day of rehearsals and there was a certain vibe in the air. You know, like everyone knew we were on the cusp of something bigger than itself. Like the kind Duval said he felt on the set of Apocalypse Now. Trouble, however, began to lurk on the horizon between the once happy co-stars. Hey, Scratch. Hey, Flater. Aw, oh, come on, cheer up, Scratch. Lisa's bound to come around at some point. You know, Flater, I'm just tired of trying to look studly for her. This time, I think it's over between me and Letha. Well, uh, maybe if you got rid of the idiot pants? <laughs> Alright, it says nothing in the script about my pants. Look, I'm just trying to keep things a little fresh with a little improv, you know? A little something I picked up at one of my many classes at The Groundlings. Yeah, well, how's this for improv, you greasy motherfucker? It's real easy for you with the perfect hair and the perfect body. You got women crawling all over you. When was the last time you were cast as a joke, huh? There's a real person inside these idiot pants. Fuck you, man. It soon became apparent that Justin's troubles ran much deeper. Justin began putting on some weight. There was a, a lot of pressure from the studio for him to remain thin. A fat scratch just wouldn't be funny. Everybody knew after lunch he would always head right to the restroom. And he would be in there a really, really long time. Justin Jewell had become addicted to laxatives. X-lax, colon cleanser, rectal relief. I mean, you put it in front of me, I'd do it. Justin's problem not only began to affect his own performance, but his co-stars as well. Justin's problems with diuretics was slowing down production. We had to do what we thought was in the best interest of the show, until Justin could get himself clean. With only two weeks left in production, Justin Jewell was fired. With the production now officially behind schedule, the show scrambled to find a replacement for Scratch. And after they got rid of Justin, they brought in this new guy. I mean, I don't even remember his name. Ironically, what we, what we realized was that what the show needed was a fat scratch. Much to the producer's dismay, Mario was unable to recapture the chemistry he had with Justin. Um, hey, uh, scratch. Hey, Slater. Um, cheer up, it's not that bad. Cut! I'm sorry. Despite his troubles, Mario was unknowingly about to leave an indelible mark on pop culture history. Um, hey, Screech, Scratch. I'm sorry. Hey, Scratch. Son of a bitch, man. I'm sorry. Can Cut. I start over? Cut. Cut. Fuck Cut. It. Cut. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that's how the name Screech was born. Do you think I'd get some sort of character payments or something? Mm -mm. Nothing. For days, Mario kept trying and trying, but he could never seem to find the chemistry he had with Justin. By this time, the studio was furious. We were grossly over budget and the network was breathing down my neck. My reputation was on the line. So they did what they had to do. Um, they pulled the plug. Saved by the Bell was officially put on the shelf. So I'm thinking that's the end of it. I go back to doing my job at TJ Maxx. I'd actually been promoted. I was now in charge of two registers instead of one. And uh, everything's great. And then two years later, I'm sitting in my parents' trailer eating my Cocoa Puffs when guess what I see on the television? Not Ricky Lake. It's not even trying to look stud-like anymore. Saved by the bell. I think it's time it's really over between me and Lisa. Look, you can't give up. They had repackaged the show with a brand new cast. A younger, much uglier cast, albeit. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Saved by the Bell stayed on the air for four successful years. It's syndicated worldwide and has proved to be the launching ground for some of this generation's finest actors. Mario Mendez never gave up his dream of acting. 
Currently, he's working as an understudy for the role of Vinnie Barbarino in the off-Broadway hit Welcome Back, Cotter, the musical. Justin Jewell decided to reprise his role as Scratch Powers, the long-lost brother of Screech Powers. He appears at weddings, bar mitzvahs, and funerals throughout the West Coast. A lawsuit from the network is currently pending. However, through it all, Mario and Justin are somehow able to find peace of mind. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, I still think a lot about it. About the what-ifs. I mean, late last night, I'm up watching TV, and the Greg Louganis story comes on, starring What's-His-Face. And I can't help but think, that could have been me. That should have been me. I could have been Greg Louganis. I wouldn't trade what I'm doing now for anything in the world. Not nothing. I mean, last week I'm out at this kid's uh, bar mitzvah thing out in uh, Riverside, you know, and uh, the kid's reading from the Toro, and uh, he looks out in the crowd, and who does he see staring back at him? Jesus Christ? No, Samuel Scratch Powers. And you should have saw the look on that kid's face. I mean, you you can't put a price on that. It's priceless. And yeah, when you're sitting there in your silk upholster chair, talking to some rich folks that you know, well, I hope you don't see me in my ragged company. All that you know, I could never be alone. Take me down, little Susie, take me down I know you think you're the queen of the underground Send me dead flowers 